Hey, what's up? It's Kevin. In this episode, I got the chance to talk to Neil Big Miss Estrada from Big Mista Barbecue. We talk about his two Long Beach restaurants. We discuss his history, how he got started in barbecue. We talk about how he got the name Big Mista. Then we go into his different TV appearances, what it was like being on those different shows. Talk about new menu items that he has coming up for his restaurant, as well as his favorite barbecue books, his favorite ribeye in Los Angeles. It's a great conversation. Neil's a great guy. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you like what you see, please be sure to subscribe as well. Well, good morning. Happy Tuesday. How are you doing, Neil? I'm doing great. How are you, Ken? I'm doing fantastic. It's been a while. I need to, to come out to, your, to both your spots. Well, I wanted to know. I know, a lot of, I know your background, but I know that a lot of people don't necessarily know your background or might not be familiar. So if uh, you can give us a little bit about your history. And first off, I don't think I've ever asked you, um, Big Mista, how did Big Mista, the name Big Mista, come about? Um, it, it just kind of evolved. I, when I came back to California from Texas, um, my standard greeting was, hey, what's on your mind, mister? And folks started greeting me the same way and then got to be, hey, mister, and then it just, it just kind of stuck. And now people in my old neighborhood, they... You know, the kids, little kids call me Uncle Mister, and, you know, it just, it just stuck, and, well, the big part is kind of obvious. <laughs> you Were you in banking before? Is that what it was, or were you in... That was my, the most recent thing I did before barbecue. Okay. I did lots of stuff before that. Yeah. yeah. Were you cooking on the side? <laughs> yeah. Well, what happened was, I was, um, I was sitting on the couch with my, I think it was my fiance at the time, now my wife. Okay. And we were watching an episode of Good Eats. And I saw Alton Brown cook a pork butt in a flower pot. And said, hey, I ought to be able to do that. I remember that episode, for sure. Uh-huh. So I, she let me go out and buy a, um, a little smoker put out on our balcony. And I pr- commenced to, to try the barbecue. Mm-hmm. And I, I got some meat and put it in there. And it was awful. <laughs> So (laughs) I figured I had to learn. So I did what, you know, what we all do. I went to the internet and I stumbled upon the uh, Barbecue Brethren website. I was going to ask you about that. I thought that was what you. Yeah, that's got to be the greatest repository of barbecue knowledge on the internet. It's awesome. Great people on there. And they basically they took me under their wing and showed me how to barbecue. I mean, I learned all the tech. I cooked before, you know, but I, I had flavors that I liked, but I didn't know any of the techniques. I didn't know anything about fire management, you know, or wrapping or, or doing any of this stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's the stuff that I, I learned and practiced out there on my balcony. And um, from there, once I felt like I was doing pretty good, I, I contacted some friends of mine and said, hey, there's a barbecue competition here in town. Uh, we should enter. And some folks that I talked to on, they were all bloggers. Mm-hmm. And we, we all talked about barbecue here in, in, in town and in our blogs. And we, we would comment on each other's blogs and say, you know, we got to put our money where our mouth is and go out there and, and give it a shot. I was, and I talked to a barbecue junkie. His name was Luis Ramirez. Mm-hmm. I remember him. And he said, no. So, uh, of course, I challenged his manhood. I called him a marshmallow and a cream puff, and he agreed as long as we got some other help. So we got uh, Professor Salt, Shuji Sakai, and uh, Sylvie Curry, who uh, now competes as Lady of Q. Oh, yeah. And we formed a team called 4Q. And we went out and, and did our first competition over at the Archer Museum. And we got a fifth and ribs our first time out, and we were hooked. Nice, nice. So we started um, just competing. We competed together for about probably about four years, and then uh, Luis, you know, had life happen. He started having kids, and he just didn't have the time. And then I, from there, I we started doing all the what do you call it, the people's choice stuff. Okay. And we were winning People's Choice Awards, so people were asking me to cook stuff for them, and that kind of grew into a little kind of a catering thing, mainly because my wife said my competitions were cutting into her shoe money. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I needed to start selling some dinners to make up for that. Ah, makes sense. 
So we sold dinners at her job and my job and wherever else we could come up with. And um, it just started growing and growing. And people, more people started asking us to do stuff. Then she got the bright idea of, hey, let's go sell at the farmer's market on the weekend. So it was her idea. Yeah, it was her idea. <laughs> so we went out there and um, we started selling barbecue. And it didn't go that well at first because nobody knew who we were. Mm-hmm. And where we were, people, everybody thought they could barbecue. Yeah, so we were selling right in the, in the middle of Watts. They had a Watts farmer's market. We were there, and uh, people would pass us by and go buy kettle corn. Like, <laughs> you know, you're spending $6 on kettle corn, but you won't buy a barbecue sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> but everybody just kind of looked at us funny. But we got lucky. Um, the editor for the food section of the L.A. Times came by. Okay. And because he was doing a thing on farmers markets and he just happened to stop by our spot and got a sandwich, got some uh, brisket. And he wrote a little blurb on the L.A. Times white website about us. OK. From there, it just kind of blew up. People were coming from everywhere to come try our barbecue. Then we started getting calls from other farmers markets. Well, can you come sell at our market and stuff like that? And there it just kind of took off. And Is that was it was the next one? Was it Atwater or Sherman Oaks? Where was the next one? You Atwater was at Mar- Atwater was the next one. Okay, because I think that's where I met you at. Yeah, that was our favorite market. Um, we loved that one. We did Atwater. We did Torrance. We were all over the place, but Atwater was the one we kept longer than any of the other ones. That was kind of like our home base. In fact, if you look on the internet, there's still places, uh, you can still go places and they have us listed. That was our address. <laughs> that was our market. Like, oh, that's no, too that's funny. Yeah, because my, bro- my brother lived in Atwater, and so he's the one, actually, I think he, because I was getting involved with barbecue, he told me about you, and I went by. Echo Park, did you ever? We, we did do Echo Park for a little while. We okay. did Eagle Rock for a while. We did, um, and then we were downtown. We did Bank of America. And Pershing Square. That's the one, too. We did um, Century City. Uh, we've done Altadena. We were all the way out at, you know, Pierce College, all the way out there. And <laughs> we were all over. So you did the, the Farmer's Market Circuit, which I had, I had no idea that there was like a Farmer's Market Circuit, essentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was kind of cool. Um, the good thing about it was that if sales started to dip, you just moved to another market. True. Uh, so you didn't have that same overhead. The hard part about it was the setting up and breaking down every day. Oh, I'm sure. You know, hauling the smoker around. Plus, you got to have your three compartment sink and all the tents and stuff like that. And well, that's get true. Up, set up and come back and cook for the next day and stuff like that. Because, you know, we were smoking stuff. It's not like just throw some stuff on the grill when you get there. So. Oh, yeah. Do you do farmer's markets at all anymore? No. Not at all, no. When I, once we got the first restaurant, we asked the crew if they wanted to start going back to the farmer's markets again. Uh, and they all said, uh, hell no. <laughs> it's probably pretty pretty darn quick. They said, no, not at all. Yeah, we like this. We like air conditioning. So did, John, did Jonathan Gold, uh, did he come by one of the farmers? He came by one of the farmer's markets, right? He came by one. He came by Atwater also. Atwater. And, uh, and um, he came and wrote a little blurb on us. And the thing is, he showed up about 10 minutes before we were closing. Really? And we had, you know, I'm scuffling because we're almost out of food. We're just pretty much out of everything. And I get, I have some little pieces of brisket that I give him. And uh, I had a couple of slices of tri-tip and a, a rib left. And and he wrote about it and he said um, that if he could uh, scrape together something that's this good, imagine what it's like when you get there when he first opens. That's fantastic. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> did you oh, blow up bigger yeah. for because of that oh, than you did that? So I get to everybody then, yeah. Yeah. I think I even remember other people talking. That that's when you got on a lot of people's radar, I think. You did a lot of Food Network stuff. You did the Barbecue Pitmasters. Was it season two or three, I think? Season two. I did season two Barbecue Pitmasters. Um, we did the Ultimate Barbecue Showdown for CBS. Okay. Um, what else did we do? Oh. So if you did the food truck race, I know that my mom even saw that. Yeah, we did the great food truck race. We did man fire food, a grill master spokesperson for Fresh and Easy. So we oh, did a lot of regional stuff, all the little news programs and stuff like that. Okay. Um, oh, I think our first national uh, TV thing was on um, 
Over Your Head, which is a show on uh, HGTV. Okay. So we did that. Yep. Um, there's so many things. We, we've been on TV. Yeah, I, I always tell folks, I said, I've been on TV more than half the actors in Hollywood, <laughs> and I didn't even look for it. <laughs> and I'm sure people run into you and see you and know you from something, but they might not quite know why they know you. Oh, yeah, I get that too. And then somebody says, yeah, I know you. You, you were that guy on that TV, huh? Yeah, I've been on TV a couple of times. So yeah. Can you share a little bit about what the experience is like? Let's say like Barbecue Pitmasters or the, the Great Food Truck Race. Are they? Is it a lot of intense filming or is it a short amount of time? I, just quickly, I'm just curious how, how that goes. Um, for Pitmasters, uh, it was a basically a two-day shoot. Okay. Um, the, con- the whole contest is shot on one day. Okay. And then all the reaction stuff was shot on the second day. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so. And then you know, food, those, the food truck race was a couple of weeks, right? Or two or three weeks? Well, we were only, only on there for two weeks, yeah. Two weeks, okay. Yeah. And it was... The people were nice. <laughs> <laughs> because I've done other productions, that wasn't my favorite one. Okay, gotcha. The Man Fire I'm, Food one was fun, yeah. I'm sure. Huh? Oh yeah, Man Fire was great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they shot, we shot that right at the shop, and and uh, we had a ball with those folks. Yeah, that guy said that he seems like a nice guy as well. Yeah. So yeah, your I first restaurant cool. opened November of was it 2014? Yes. And that's a sandwich shop, right? Yeah, because yeah, this will be three years. Yeah, okay. that's the sandwich shop, correct? And and t- w- tell me a little bit about that, or how the impetus and like what. What got you? You, I, of course, you wanted to have your own brick and mortar place, and you were looking downtown at first, right? Right. We were going to open um, a place downtown LA. Uh, the people that we were dealing with, well, let's just say, for just to keep me safe, um, the deal didn't go through. Gotcha. Okay. There were some complications with with the other parties that as, made o- it, as often but, happens. Yeah. <laughs> so we right. ended up looking around closer to home because we live in Long Beach. And we stumbled on a place and said, hey, we can make this work. And it was actually, it's actually a bakery. It was a bakery for another restaurant that's there. Oh, wow. And we took that over. So we moved in there. We have this huge bakery oven. We have this vat that they use to make sauce. Okay. You know, or not sauce, but... um. They would do all their icing, you know, like a big double boiler type that thing. Oh, wow. So we had that and the oven and the smoker. That That's all the equipment we have. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no stove in there. Really? We have no stove. Uh, everything is either cooked in the smoker, in the oven, or in that vat. You know, that's the actually kind of cool. Yeah. We, um, in the vat, we make our sauce. We make our, you know, our greens and... You know, boil up pasta for the macaroni and cheese, and everything else either goes in the oven or the smoker. Wow, that's like it's kind of lean and mean. Very lean, yeah. And and so for so the hours, just so people know, the hours for the sandwich shop are are you're open every are odd. <laughs> are odd. <laughs> to say the, okay, so is it so is it be- best to follow you on social media to get the hours? Is that the best way? Well, yeah, you can do that. I mean, I can tell you the hours. The hours. Sunday and Tuesday, we're open 11 to 4. Okay. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday, we're open 11 to 6. Okay. Friday and Saturday, we open 11 to 8. So the later in the week, the later we stay open. Which makes sense. That makes sense for you. And and, and what's the, the, the bat, is it, how do you pronounce it, bat poem? <laughs> bat poem, uh, it's the big ass pile of meat. And what's on that? That's basically a sampler platter. We have two different ones. Uh, we have there's one that's uh, two and a half pounds, and there's another one that's four pounds. Oh wow! The oh my god, and the and the damn. <laughs> so, so they're just samples of all. Our, you know, it's a sampler with all of our meats: the brisket, pulled pork, ribs, turkey, uh, rib tips. Oh, fantastic! And, and uh, hot links. Oh, making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, that morning wood you opened a year later, but it's it's is it it's it's barbecue, but it's also based. It's also kind of going towards breakfast, right? Right, right. And that one's open in the morning. That's a breakfast and lunch place. Um, we 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 were, we were able. We actually have a stove there <laughs> and, a, and a deep fry and a flat top, so we can do some different things oh, nice. there. So 
we're doing um, you know, pig candy pancakes. Uh, we're doing a sweet potato brisket hash. Oh, oh. Um, we do what's uh, a Benedict. We call it Aaron's Fatty Benedict. Uh, it's a recipe that I kind of tweaked. I got it from a friend of mine down in San Diego, Aaron Black. Okay. So it's actually two biscuits, um, fatty sausage. You know, we take the the chub sausage, mm-hmm. reseason and smoke it. And then we put slice and put two of the fatties down, uh, fried egg, smoked sausage gravy. We use that fatties to make the gravy uh-huh. and crumble bacon all over the top of that. Oh, oh, I think I saw. I think I saw it online recently. I think it was on Instagram, right? Um, right, right. Yeah, that looks ridiculously good. And then for all the folks who think they have a, a big appetite, we have the big ass breakfast. <laughs> Everybody leaves with a box. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> no, fantastic. Nobody finishes it. And that's over in Lakewood, right? Which is kind of northern. Actually, uh, it's it's a Long Beach address. Okay. It's right. It's right. It's right where it's at Carson and Lakewood. Okay. So it's at the corner. Um, I think if you go north from us, it turns into Lakewood, but okay. um, it's actually a Long Beach address because we're actually on Carson. Gotcha. Don't people kind of consider Lakewood Long Beach too? Like a lot of times people say, I live in Long Beach, but it's Lakewood. I don't know. I just, I, I, some people have said that to me over the years. The line is really, really crooked. <laughs> so unless you know your exact address in the zip code, you know, you could be in either one in there. You just, I could drive down the street and go in and out of Lakewood four or five. <laughs> the the pig candy. Do you have pig candy at both locations? No, only at the breakfast uh, place. Like Morningwood, okay. Morningwood, uh huh. Um, you can go there. You can buy it by itself, or you can get it in the pancakes. Okay. Um, that you know is always it. That's kind of been a claim to fame for a long time. And did you it, did you create pig candy, or did you just make it popular? I did not create pig candy. It's been around for a while. I, there's a lot of stuff that I don't create. I just perfect it. <laughs> Embellishment is, is, is my forte. I, I take a recipe and and twist it and flip it and make it something incredible. So you big missed it, right? Yeah, yeah. So I make the pig candy. <laughs> <laughs> could, is pig candy something that you could ever sell at a store, or is it something you always have to sell kind of fresh? From? Yeah, it's better fresh. Yeah, yeah. And you have you have bar, you have rub right you you have your big mystery. we do have our rub we um we haven't been selling it recently uh, we just changed to a new uh, um, packer so we're gonna talk we're talking to them about bottling right now okay but we have our 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 three rubs we have our perfect pork rub our bitch and beef rub and our chicken scratch okay cool and did you have sauce do you ever sell have you ever sold sauce or do you want to sell sauce no, not really. It's you got to have a whole different, you know. You, I'd have to go out and get it bottled something like that. But our sauce is, you know, just something you get there. Mm-hmm. You get some of it. And we'll, I mean, if somebody wants of it, we'll sell them a container of it. But gotcha. you don't bottle it. I guess that's a, um, that's a completely different animal if you want to be a sauce company. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, Phyllis is the brains. Of She's the, the brains. I was saying all I do is cook and look cute. <laughs> <laughs> so that works out. Hey, that works out good, right? I, I tell everybody if it's written down on a piece of paper, give it to Phyllis. Gotcha. <laughs> and, actually, have- and, and Phyllis is the one who got when I when I requested the interview. She's the one that got back to me and said, "I'll get with Neil. I'll make sure." <laughs> see, see, stuff written down goes to her. That's true. And she has a book, right? No, I wrote the, I wrote a book. Did, um, she, did she write a book as well or no? My book. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and that was a while back. That was the uh, secret to her heart. Okay. Um, cookbook I did, a kind of a dating cookbook. Okay. Um, it's still available on Amazon. That's nice. Uh, of secrets to her heart. Um, a lot of recipes. Uh, it's not a barbecue book. Um, basically, for the guy that's entertaining and wants to impress a girl. So I give a lot of dating tips as well as. Um, uh, you know, the recipes and this very basic, you know, the, it, I had actually had my my 12 year old son at the time cooking all the recipes. I said, if he can learn it, you can learn. It. Oh, that's very cool. That's very <laughs> yeah, cool. I mean, I teach folks. I mean, you want to impress a girl, invite her over for dinner. Yeah. Okay. And I, lots of tips, you know, about, you know, clean your apartment, make sure you vacuum. <laughs> Tell people, you know, if you invite a girl over and you say, you know, kick your shoes off, make yourself comfortable. 
people are, are more comfortable when they take the shoes off. But if they're walking across your floor and stepping on frito crumbs, you know, <laughs> it kind of changes the mood. It kind of does. I think that's a one in a thousand person likes that. Uh, well, that's and it's also and it's also sharing that when you cook with someone or cook for someone or cook with someone, that's that experience at last. Right, yeah. That's it's worth more than almost anything. And now, do you still do the? Do you still do the charity event in Galveston? No, we haven't done that in the uh, past couple of years. Um, we know a lot of other charity stuff. I help out wherever I can around town and stuff like that. Well, I know. Um, trying to get more involved here here in the city we live. You know, um, you know, trying to do some community things. You know, a lot of stuff is kind of behind the scenes and stuff like that. Well, of course. Meeting people and um, kind of not getting involved in city government, but you know, meeting the people that are that are involved and and talking to them, you know, sharing our experiences, things that, that are going on and things that are working for us and things that are not. On a local level. Yeah, right. Overall, you know, Long Beach is a great city. I really love it. I love living here. Um, met a lot of great people here. And it's rare now that I go north of the 91 freeway. Wow. <laughs> I, 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 everything is here, you know. Long Beach is a big city. Oh, it's huge. It's massive. The city council is great. Um, you know, I know some of the city council members, uh, Al Austin, Stacey Mungo, and Mayor uh, Garcia. He's he's awesome. Um, like I said, they're doing some great things, very progressive, very diverse. Um, and it's generally a comfortable place to be. So, <laughs> yeah, There's more parking than L.A. Uh, that, so much easier to park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All, yeah, I know it's it's so. Park in front of my house. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is true. Well, to, to wrap it up, I got a couple quick questions. Do you have a favorite barbecue joint across the United States or in California that you like to go to when you're traveling? Outside of um, Long Beach. My favorite barbecue place is not mine. Yes. Um, when I'm out traveling, was probably is probably Killens. Uh, probably a little biased. Um, because he's a friend. Actually, before we opened our restaurant, I called him up and asked him if I could come work in his restaurant for a week. Really? Because I, we knew the um, we knew how to cook, but we had never had a restaurant before. So I wanted to learn about processes and things like that, how to get things set up. And I told him, I said, I'm not after. I don't want. I'm not. I don't care about your recipes. I want to learn how things work in the restaurant, how to set things up to keep a smooth operation. He said, sure, come on down. So I, I went down there and worked for a week in his, in his shop. And Over in Pearland? Oh, in Pearland, uh-huh. Uh, that's all. That's fantastic. That That's yeah. really cool. You go to steakhouses much? I know I'm sure you cook steak at home. And stuff. But if you mm. were, okay, so. <laughs> I, I, gonna... I might eat a steak once or twice a year. Oh, really? Because you I'm put not, so much. So you don't I'm eat... happier with the hamburger than I am with the steak. Do you have a favorite hamburger joint? Oh, man. There's so many. I can grab a burger from anywhere. Yeah. I tell you, the best steak I've had in Los Angeles uh, is at the Bonaventure Hotel at their restaurant up on top of the hotel. Uh-huh. And the one that spins around. I had a ribeye there that was so amazing. Really? And like I said, I'm not really a steak guy, uh-huh. but that was the best steak I ever had. Wow. Okay. I, I'll have to check that. I've been up there I think, for drinks a long time ago. I, I haven't been there for food. Yeah, the restaurant up there is awesome. But I mean, I, and I was there because I had taught a class there. Um, uh, every year I go there, I teach um, a barbecue class. They have these classes that are that they do for you know you pay fifty bucks, you get a hands-on class, and then they have drinks and stuff like that. They pair the you know different drinks with the with the food, and people can go there and eat and drink. And usually the chefs teach it, but. They have me come in and teach a barbecue class. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, so that's fun. Oh, that's neat. Now, one one last thing about when you first started out, did you buy any barbecue books, or was there any barbecue book that kind of paved the way for you at all, or was it more the bre- the barbecue brethren website? Um, the brethren website was is pretty much it. There are a couple of uh, books. Um, one, uh, what's the book by uh, Lawless Eric? Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, smokestack lightning. That's the one. That one and um, 
Peace, love, and barbecue. Peace, love, I was gonna, I was gonna guess that. That was the first one I was gonna guess when you said it. Okay. Yeah. But Amy Mills and Mike Mills. Yeah. Yeah, those are my two favorites. And I think for those, it's more about the stories than the recipes. For sure. Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to mention, something we're doing now, we're doing something called turkey tips. Okay. And what turkey tips are is dark meat turkey uh-huh. that we were, we were able to get. And we, we, we put our chicken scratch on it and we smoke it and we cut it like you would cut rib tips. Oh, fantastic. And we serve these and you, the texture, you cannot tell the texture is you think it's pork. Really? From the texture, yeah. Great flavor. And then I called Chris Lilly uh, from Big Bob Gibson's in Alabama. Uh-huh. And I asked him about his white sauce. Because this is poultry. So mm-hmm. I asked him about his white sauce. And, you know, it's all, it's basically, it's all over the internet. You know, the uh, basic recipe for it. So I talked to him a little bit about it. And then I tweaked it. I changed out some things in it. Mm-hmm. Like I replaced um, white vinegar with apple cider vinegar. Uh, a little more horseradish, uh, you know, replace cayenne with chipotle and made what we call now our Kelly Bama sauce. <laughs> and we serve this on, on the turkey tips, so either on a sandwich or you can get it on a plate or whatever. You talk about amazing. Really? I, I'm eating it and petting myself on the back. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never heard of that before. I've never heard of anybody making that. That's That's such a great idea. Yeah. Oh wow! Okay, well that is that's really cool. Is that at both locations or just the uh, sandwich? Uh, it's going to be at both locations. Uh, probably next week. Right now it's just at the sandwich shop, but next week it'll be at both locations. Awesome. Well, <laughs> well, I'm going to try to figure out a way in the next few weeks to come. I live in the the northern region where you don't come, so I'll have to <laughs> figure out a way to get. Well, there's out. a line in LA where, where most <laughs> food writers don't go past. I know. Most of them go south of the ten, so well, I, 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 I that's my I rebel, so I don't go north of the ten. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that. That's how you get back at us, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, thank you very much for your time. I really, I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll I'll shoot you any questions that I have if I if there's anything that we talked about that I want to put links to and stuff. But I'll I'll put links in the show notes. But uh, thank you so much, and uh, have a great have a great week. And thank you again. I, I appreciate you being my first. Happy to do it, man. Awesome. Take care, Neil. <laughs>